we are back. Welcome back to the Find Me in Seattle podcast live from my apartment in Lower Queen Anne here in Seattle, Washington. I am your host every single week. My name is Connor Kaysen and it is my job to discover the city, but it is 2020. So discovering the city has become very, very different this year, but that is okay. There's new ways. There's always different ways to explore, doing a lot of takeout food, going for walks, different kind of exploring. Used to take public transportation every single day. Haven't ridden on a bus or public transportation uh, really since February. And we'll see when I'll eventually get back into that routine because that was kind of a pillar of something that I really believed in. It was fun, honestly, to ride the bus around the city and how I got around discovered. But times are changing and obviously that's maybe not the safest thing to be me to be doing when I don't have to and I am lucky enough that I don't have to which is great Uh, but thanks for joining me back here on the show I'm recording a little different time usually the show comes out every Friday today is Monday December 21st and uh yeah I feel like I I, I've created maybe it's an excuse of like it's 2020 pandemic all the stuff's going on and so do I really need to be that timely yes i should i think when the new year starts up i will hopefully get back into a better routine but i appreciate you giving me some grace on uh whenever this comes out it's kind of on my own schedule at this point this is the second to last show of the year i have committed i'm going to do one more show against the new year and i hope that next show kind of do a rundown of the year and all the things that i liked all the things that i learned and uh maybe lots of things that i didn't like as well but uh This week's episode, I didn't really gather a lot of news for you this week. I apologize. There's not a lot of things that I felt were sharing that just wouldn't damper the already very damper mood. Um, But I did do a lot in the last 10 days. So I want to kind of give you a run through of all of those things. Uh, Let's start first with treasure hunting here in Seattle. Amanda found this person they go by at treasure guys on tiktok they also have an instagram at treasure guys and what he's been doing is he wants to grow a following by hiding buried treasure throughout the city of seattle and so we've kind of been interested in following along and i think he's done maybe like four or five giveaways to this point and it was last week the day, the day was kind of funny. I woke up at like 6 a.m. last week uh, so I could get on BestBuy.com and try to buy the brand new Xbox. And that was such a a, a total fail. Xbox, or I'm sorry, Best Buy had announced that we're getting Xboxes and Playstations in tomorrow. It's You have to order it online. And they said we're going to get it after 9 a.m., eastern time so for us west coasters that's 6 a.m but they didn't actually say what time and they did not say that it was going to be released right on the hour and so there were probably thousands of people based off the tweets that i was following along including myself who woke up at 5 45 and got on their computer and was refreshing the best buy app over and over and over again the devices didn't even get released until like three hours later i spent the first hour of the morning, just refreshing, refreshing, checking Twitter, seeing if anyone else was getting one. The news was coming out. It's like, oh, well, it said after 9 a.m. Eastern. doesn't really mean it wasn't like a launch time. And I guess they did that so the bots wouldn't buy up all the devices. I guess that's been a problem with getting these PlayStation Xboxes out are that I guess people have code that they write that troll these websites so right when these devices come on sale they can kind of like auto buy them and so by the time amanda wakes up she kind of gets into it too and she's refreshing the page and staying on top of it and we're communicating with some friends and i was on another phone call and they go live but the playstations went live and not the xboxes uh and so i was trying to buy a playstation because i'm like look at this craziness if i can get a playstation i might as well buy one and see what i can do with it um at worst i knew other people trying to buy one i was like i can just give it to them and charge them the same price i did and they'll be happy that they got one uh but then there was a tweet that goes out and walmart is also releasing xboxes so then within like 10 minutes amanda had bought an xbox on walmart and i had bought an xbox on 
Best Buy, but the Walmart one doesn't ship until like the second week of January and the Xbox one I'm actually going to pick up later today. This is so far on the point. Where am I going with this, Connor? Uh, I wake up really early that morning, right? And not an extremely eventful day, but it was up way earlier than normally. And I was like, by nine o'clock, I'm gonna be, uh, go to sleep. I think I fell asleep on my couch at like 8.30. I woke up, I got in bed, and it was like 10.30. And before I'm like fully asleep, Amanda shows me the TikTok of the Treasure Guys. And the whole beginning of the Treasure Guy is him eating a uh, Pagliacci pizza here in Seattle. And then he says, oh, I have this other $100 treasure that I'm hiding. And he's like, I'm at Cary Park, but the treasure's not at Cary Park. It is at a park on that same street as Cary Park. And immediately I know uh, the park is called Parsons Park. It's like down the street, there's another view from Cary Park. And immediately I'm like, I know exactly what park he's talking about. It's gotta be Parsons Park. Um, and then I get all excited. And so I went from being exhausted to like jumping out of bed, putting on clothes, putting on my jacket, grabbing the keys, and we went to this Parsons Park to go look for the treasure. He doesn't really give any clues. He shows that it was a box full of $2 bills and that's about it. So we bring a big, oh, we bring our flashlights. We get to the park. We're like walking around the whole park, shining in, looking for bushes, looking for this box, uh, figuring that it was going to be like somewhat out in the open. He posted about five hours ago, but usually the uh, treasures are taking like two days to find for people. We probably spend 30 minutes searching this park for the treasure and we can't find it. So then we start thinking like maybe we have the wrong park. We can't find it here. So then there's like a parklet across the street. We search that. We're looking on Google Maps. There's like these other semi parks throughout Queen Anne on that street. And we start second guessing ourselves because the street is like Northwest Street. And so, um, you know, we, we probably spent 90 minutes searching for this treasure in the middle of the night. I get home, it's like midnight. I was like, man, I was up so early uh, and I was planning to go to bed early and I did it. But wake up the next morning. I commented on the TikTok. No one had claimed the treasure yet. So then I'm just like, all right, it's daytime. I can see a lot better. I'm gonna go back to this park and look for this treasure. Thankfully, I didn't have anything going on that morning. And the treasure, so I'm again, looking around the park, can't find anything. The park is relatively busy for it being a small park. Like just people walking through. There was two sets of parents with their children, like letting them run around the park. And so very quickly, I'm like, if this box would have been out in the open, someone would have found it. These kids are running through all the bushes and all the planters. And if you would have put it out in the open, someone would have opened it up and, and found the box. So, I, so I spend maybe like 25 minutes looking up the trees, looking high, looking all the bushes. I'm sure the other people are looking at me thinking like, what's this guy doing? He must've lost something here. And I give up after like another 30 minutes. And then I go home and it's just like, all right, we must have the clue wrong. It must be at the wrong park. And then we get a second clue from him. And he said, we can confirm that it's at Parsons Park. And he says, look up. And I'm really confused at this point because I have been looking up the whole time. I was looking at all the trees. And so Amanda and I, later in the evening, it's probably around like 3.30, 4 o'clock. So it's starting to get dark. Go back to the park, search the whole park, looking up in all the trees. And then there's this gazebo there. And I felt like we had searched the entire gazebo up and down. I climbed up on the, the steps to like look up. It was on the top. And turns out Amanda spots it, spots the box. It is easily like 15 feet up on the top of the gazebo and like hidden above this wooden plank. He hid it in an extremely... A uh, good spot. No one, I mean, if people weren't looking for it, it could have taken people a long time. At the same time, when we were in this park, we did see another couple. They were clearly also looking for the treasure. They just, they had their phones out. Uh, they were looking around. They, they were acting very much like us. But then they left the park. And so um, I had to end up like climbing the entire gazebo, sitting on top of it and grabbing the box and opening it up. It's got a note there which uh, related to the clue video was written on a, this Pagliacci pizza box. And then there were 25 crisp $2 bills inside this box. And uh, the whole thing was like, wow, like we actually found the treasure and look at these cool uh, dollar bills and everything that we got actually for those here on the video, here they are, um, right? And he just gave us all of this treasure. And then 
once I posted it on social media, I posted it on my TikTok. I will be posting on Instagram. I posted it on Instagram stories as well. And they, he, what Treasure Guys ended up doing is then sending me an extra 50 bucks on Venmo because I posted his store and I like helped promote it. So um, 100 bucks, ton of fun, really enjoyable. Uh, go check out Treasure's, Treasure Guys. I know he's doing like maybe like once a week and He's saying that he's going to start making it a little bit harder. The Barsons Park one happened to be easy, but he's put other ones like on the island. He put one at Discovery Park and just thought it was a really creative, fun idea for someone to take their own cash and just be giving it away. And uh, he doesn't actually have a ton of followers on TikTok, surprisingly. Um, and so we kind of like, let's take advantage of this now before it does become popular. And yeah, 150 bucks. I'm sorry, 100 bucks. 50 bucks in cash, 50 on Venmo. Super cool. Check out Treasure, guys. Um, I think I've talked enough about the treasure hunt, but that was a ton of fun. All right, what else did I do here at Find Me in Seattle this week? I got a Christmas burger from South Lake Union's local. Uh, it's funny, it's called local. I don't think it's locally owned. Uh, it sounds like they have franchises or businesses all across the country and I believe in Canada, but you know, it's called local. And what they sent to me was called the Christmas burger. And it was a hefty stack, not the craziest burger I've ever had, but extra, extra tasty. So it had a layer of crispy chicken, had a sausage patty, bacon, white cheddar, cranberry sauce, caramelized onions, cabbage, and uh, a layer of peppercorn gravy that like the bun sat on. Came with a side of the fries and a man and I split it. I think it's 21 bucks and which is kind of expensive, but it's a meal enough for two people and super tasty, really delicious. Uh, when I picked it up from local, I was surprised that they have a ton of out outdoor seating as well. They set up like two big tents that have heaters and then they're, all their windows like slide open in the restaurant. So they actually have like four or five tables that are technically inside and covered, but they're sitting on these big open windows. So you're getting all the, the circulation and ventilation. So if you are the kind of person that is brave enough to be going and dining out at restaurants right now, that could be a good place to go. They also have TV. So if you want to watch the Seahawks game or watch any of these college bowl games, uh, that would be worth it. It would have been a nice place maybe to watch that losing MLS cup that I told you we weren't going to talk about last week. Uh, but local also gave me another food item that I thought was super creative and I'm really surprised that I haven't seen it elsewhere. And they just called it a TV dinner. It was like a foil tray with a lid sealed uh, with uh, potatoes and chicken and a bunch of different kind of like mix-ins. It was almost like the deconstructed burger. And they called it the TV dinner. And I thought that was absolutely genius and so smart and was surprised this is the first place that had seen it this late in the year with all of this takeout but the tv dinner i think is a really smart idea for restaurants to just say hey like we have these pre-packaged meals for you all you gotta do is pop them in the oven for a little while and they're good right they have a uh, fridge shelf life for maybe like 72 hours and you can buy a couple of them and you pop them in the in your oven and you pull them out and they're tasty delicious dinner for you i I think this would be a really, really smart idea for a lot of restaurants and businesses to try. Uh, this food to go thing ain't changing for the next six months. So why not create other ways for people to consume your food? Maybe not like in live time, but also get to have the reminder and eat your food one to two days later. TV dinner. If you're a restaurant out there, definitely think about how you can work that in. I think there's there's something to be had there. It was like buy a meal and get a TV dinner with it. I mean, I spent 21 bucks on this burger. I'm not sure what the cost to prepare that burger was, but to like throw in a TV dinner with that and charge 25 bucks. Um, and it's like, all right, I buy one and I kind of get one free. I think that's a really smart idea and a way to be feeding more people and more days of the week. Be a really good idea. Check out that TV dinner. A local from South Lake Union, if you are interested, I did something that I very, very rarely do. I went to the same food business twice in one week. I went to Ono Poke. They've been featured here on the show before. I hands down think that they're the best poke in all of the greater Seattle area. It's worth the 20 minute drive to go to Edmonds to get the fresh uh, fish. It's all like authentic Hawaiian style poke and the I'd never seen this in any other spot, uh, but the owner was there and Ono was actually taking the tuna and like dicing it up and chopping it right there front of house. So it felt like I was at a sushi restaurant and that just, I haven't seen that anywhere else. There's no other poke restaurant that is 
cutting up the fresh tuna right in front of us uh, like they are. And that just, you know, creates this essence of like, oh, I'm eating something that's fresh and good. And um, there's this family aspect to uh, all these things and just absolutely unbelievable. I went there two weekends in a row and it's going to be hard for me to go to Edmonds and go to the fishmonger or anywhere else because this poke is just to die for. Uh, but so check them out if you're looking for a little fish adventure. Another place I went, I was in Columbia City last Wednesday, and there's this business. It's a bar, actually. It's called Lottie's. And so with bars and the pandemic, they don't have patrons coming and sitting inside. They don't really have an outdoor seating area. And so I wanted to highlight them because I think they have been creative in the way that they're trying to serve customers and coming up with new ideas, which I think a lot of bars have really struggled because their food services have always been rather limited to begin with anyways. But now they they have to be creative. So what Lottie's did was obviously, so the bar's fully closed, but they have the door open and the door is kind of where the register is and they have a bartender sitting in the door with access to their bar behind and they can make cocktails to go. But what they also had over the summer is they bought like a hot dog cart and so they had a hot dog stand sitting outside uh, with a big sign for hot dogs and they had their bar serving out the front door which uh, was really cool. I blew my chance to get the hot dog when I walked by the first time I saw it. I I already had plans to go eat food so I always wanted to go back and get the hot dog So my plan was actually to go get the hot dog this week. Uh, Finally, it's probably months later. But instead of doing hot dogs, because they can't put the cart outside because as right now, it's like pouring rain, they started doing a soup counter. So now that walk-up window, they have the bartender and you can get kind of all these cocktails to go. But then they also have soup uh, with a slice of bread and it was like five bucks for a bowl of soup. And I just thought that they deserved a shout out for putting in the effort to try to do something to create some service, create some demand and get some people to come up. $5 soup, they change the soup menu every single day. uh, So they're always offering different things. And then if you really want to get a cocktail, you can too. Columbia City also has one of their streets blocked off with a big tent. So if you want to sit somewhere, uh, it's not a problem to go and sit in a covered area and kind of enjoy the soup. And that's what I did. There was zero people sitting in this covered area every covered area that's like a public space that I go to is always empty. They're so underutilized uh, right now. I just think it's just hard to get the word out. But uh, Lotties, you deserve a shout out because I think you are putting in an effort to try to create something out of your bar and your restaurant and, and drive more demand. And I think that is very admirable right now. Those are the stories that I'm looking for. Every single restaurant and business is struggling right now. So doing a little bit more just to stick out, deserve to uh, get a shout out here. Some other people that are doing something really interesting this last weekend, I visited Trace Lecheria on 45th in Wallingford, and they were doing a collaboration with a fellow foodie, Ken, at Feed the Pudge. And Trace Lecheria used to be known as Cubes Baking, and everything, as you can as you can imagine, was baked in a cube at Cubes Baking. Uh, But since the shutdown, they've kind of transitioned and gone very product specific. It sounds like that has been the model that has been most successful so far is like there's a lot of competition within the food industry. So focus on the one thing you do really well, market the heck out of that and try to get people to make your spot a destination to come for that. So I think it was really smart for them to to rebrand as Trace Lecheria and just be serving that specific dessert. And so the collaboration with Feed the Pudge included two special trace leches. There was a Choco Taco inspired one and a strawberry shortcake. And the strawberry shortcake like just took me right back to my childhood eating those ice cream bars. It even had the the crumbles on the top. And uh, the Choco Taco one was just as good. We kind of, Amanda and I both fought over both of them. And they didn't last very long because there's milk in them. So we had to eat them really quickly, but absolutely delicious. A little fun fact about the owner there at Trace Lecheria. If you want to learn more about him and his story, you can go on to Netflix and they have a, he's, he won, maybe I shouldn't have given away that he won, but there's an episode of Sugar Rush, uh, which is like a holiday baking show. And he, he's on, I believe episode three, season two. 
Um, and then I know he's on another one. You'll have to Google him on your own if you want to see what that other show is. I have not watched that, but shout out to Trace Lecheria in Wallingford. It was absolutely delicious. If you're looking for a special little treat here uh, during the holidays, they are someone that I would highly recommend. What else? Uh, I went to Joey Kitchen. I got a meal kit from Joey Kitchen this past week. And so what Joey is in University District, they're also in Bellevue. It's kind of like a higher end bar. I haven't been to one of these places in a really long time. And uh, I always knew they used to put, uh, they would have like these frozen cocktails. It was like Froze cocktail or something. They were doing that way before uh it became like trendy and instagrammable but joey kitchen in u village had these like really cool do-it-yourself fajita kit boxes that they gave me and so they offer chicken and steak fajitas all of the mix-ins and they had no clue what i was getting when i collaborated with them i just showed up um i met the manager and they gave me this box wrapped in a bow so i'm not really sure if you get the box in the bow if you order it uh, but i thought i was just getting like fajitas to go but it turns out i was gonna cook these at home uh which you've heard me in past episodes talk about cooking at home is always a little weird for me uh when you go to a restaurant but right now it makes a lot of sense and it exceeded my expectation i have this like smokeless grill uh, which is really great for any of you living in seattle who love grilling a s indoor smokeless grill is very very nice to have um, so you don't have to go outside when it is freezing cold and the so as i was cooking on the smokeless grill all the fajitas all i do is like chop up the lettuce and um fry up all of the mixing so the peppers and everything else and then put it all together they give you like servings of salsa and this guacamole crema cheese kind of and tortillas uh, you can fry up those tortillas as well if you like them a little bit more crispy and it exceeded my expectations i think this kit's like 40 or 50 bucks but it it fed us for both of us for dinner and leftovers the next day so it's probably good for two to three people i know they came with plenty of tortillas and um yeah it was a meal kit that actually a lot of times sometimes i do these meal kits for the bigger restaurants and i'm not so excited about this but joey kitchen actually delivered it was a, a substantial amount of food which to me is always important when you get something like this and you're going to go cook it at home what else? What else? What else? For those watching on video, I got this new microphone. This is like my Christmas gift to myself. I think I'm going to buy a second one actually because Amanda has been pushing me. She's going to get wrapped up here a little bit more in the podcast. And I'm curious what you guys think. How can I work her into the show? Should we make it into like a two person conversation? I don't know how I'm going to do the, the YouTube version of that, uh, but I think I'm going to get her a microphone and it seems like everyone enjoys listening to her a little bit more than me. So maybe I, I'm going to put her on the show and, and we got to figure out what that system is going to be, but you can expect maybe to see her a little bit more. I guess maybe look at the video here in the frame. Maybe we can just fit us both and I'll, I'll do it the easy way. Uh, but expect to see her probably here at the new year because we're just going to work on getting her in, at least as a special guest. Some other things that are going on, if you check out my Instagram, I've got a whole bunch of giveaways. I mentioned this last week. I've been buying or been trying to buy gift cards from local businesses as I visit them. And so right now I have gift cards for Marination Station. I, I'm gonna do two giveaways for Ono Poke. I bought a $25 gift card and they also reached out and said, we'll get five free Poke Bowls out. So you can expect that. I got Bang Rock Market, which is a Thai restaurant in Belltown, Tilikum Place, uh, Yoroshiku, which is a ramen spot. I bought one for Trace Lecheria and Rosita's. And I'm just going to keep trying to find more and more. I'm going to buy some off of intentionalist.com because I know they've got some gift cards and keep going. It's, I've been surprised how many businesses don't have gift cards. Like I picked up food from Jerk Shack in Belltown, delicious, delicious food, and they didn't offer gift cards. I was so surprised. It was something that I was just kind of assumed that they would have had them, but they didn't. And they also weren't on intentionalist. So and that's just got to be a point of sale situation or who knows what's going on gift cards aren't necessarily the easiest to integrate into your point of sale sometimes and maybe it's just more work and people aren't actually buying them but i will keep searching out those giveaways because that's just a fun way to support everybody involved right it helps me 
It's fun for you in the audience who are watching me on Instagram. Maybe I'll do one on TikTok also. And it, it's great for the local business. And they get promoted. They get a little bit extra revenue up front. And hopefully they get a new lifelong customer if they deliver well on their food, uh, which is not super easy right now. I, I've had some weird to-go menus. Maybe I should talk about some of those, but usually I don't talk about negative things when it comes to restaurants here on the show. Also, uh, for those listening, I'm, I'm working in this intro. The Slick Watts by Blue Scholars has been like my favorite Seattle song for years. It just names all the neighborhoods. I've always had this idea of doing a video, taking a video in every single one of the neighborhoods that they mention. The Sounders actually tried to do something similar, which I was super disappointed to see that in the stadium one time. Uh, but I haven't got permission for them to use the song. Maybe one day, Blue Scholars, you're out there listening, you'll you'll legally allow me to do it. But I'm, I'm gonna still put it in because I just love that song. And uh, if if it becomes a problem, I'll take it down and, and try to ask for them. Not, there's not enough people listening to the show for it to really be an issue. Uh, but that's it. That is all of my content for this week's podcast. Thank you for joining me at the Find Me in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Connor. Once again, we are talking about local burger or the local Christmas burger and TV dinner. We talked about the soup station at Lottie's in Columbia City, going to Ono Poke, treasure hunting in Queen Anne with the treasure guys, Trace Lecheria in Wallingford, Joey Kitchen. That is it for me here at Find Me in Seattle. I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas this week, and uh, we have one more show before the end of the year, and then let's start new, do something fresh, and you know, make try, try to make it better than... 2020 because this has been just crazy all right guys thanks a lot please leave a review like share with a friend if you're so inclined i appreciate every single bit of engagement and we'll talk to you next week